Zelda come well from? Spoiler warning if you haven't beaten Zelda Echoes of Wisdom, as the second half of this game change everything we know about the reason behind the creation of the world of Hyrule. So be sure to leave a like, subscribe and press the notification bell and let's dive straight into why the three golden goddesses are in this game. This is your final warning. You cannot understate the significance of this. The three golden goddesses, Din, Nehru and Feror, speak directly to Princess Zelda or their priestess of wisdom in Echoes of Wisdom. And for a good reason, as the force creating the rifts in Hyrule, aka the opponent of Zelda and Link, is also the arch or original foe of the creators of the Triforce. Much like the mice was for Hylia in the backstory of Skyward Sword. It is just that this sentient being predates the creation of the world by the holiest trio in the entire franchise. Null, a name that lives up to the phrase Null and Void. After beating the second of the three goddess temples in the second half of the game, the goddess in question has this to say, quote, Before the creation of the skies and the lands, there was a void, a vast nothingness. In the void, some things will begin taking form, only to be devoured by the one who dwelt there. The name of this one is Null. Null desired the world in its entirety and consumed all life indiscriminately. We three goddesses could not abide this and created the skies and the lands to contain Null. All the while, Null continued creating rifts, working ceaselessly to return the world to a void. And so we brought forth the tries to dissipate the rifts, thus keeping the balance. End quote. This revelation to Princess Zelda can be delivered by Din, the goddess of power, and Feror, the goddess of courage. Though to me, it is most fitting that such words in Echoes of Wisdom is delegated and delivered to Zelda by the goddess of wisdom, Nehru. The goddess and Triforce piece that has always been attached to Princess Zelda since Zelda won in 1986, as seen by her connection to the Triforce of Wisdom. Speaking of the Triforce, the updated creation lore doesn't change the lore from the 90s. The omnipotent relic was still created by the goddesses, more precisely left behind as a parting gift when they departed back home to the heavens. A wish granting and communication tool, if you will. Equally so, it is still in canon and trust to goddess Heidi, the goddess who stayed behind to guard and protect the creation of the highest goddesses. Without this burial act of Null, there will be no hope for all future life in the mortal realm. There will be nothing but no, and we wouldn't have our favorite video game world. The surface, and on it, Hyrule. The goddesses are so much more important than the caretaker, goddess Hylia. And Din, Nehru and Feror have only solidified their prominence at the very top of the Zelda universe after Echoes. Not only did they create the world, but they did so to keep a potentially all-consuming entity buried under the skies and lands. Naturally, Null still controlled the core of Void underneath, and as an entity that craved it all, it wouldn't share with any life or goddess. In this case, Hylia. Hence the rifts which Din, Nehru and Feror immediately responded with the creation of the Tries, who remained invisible to anyone who was not of royal blood or escaped the Void alive. With the divine power, they used it to create echoes and bind elements to pull them back where they belong and then close the rifts. That is to say, Norse windows to the layers of the living. All of this has been taking place since after the creation and departure of the Golden Goddesses. Through Goddess Hylia's lengthy reign, the Sky Era, the founding of the Kingdom of Hyrule, first fall of said kingdom at the hand of Ganondorf across three different realities, more confrontations against Ganondorf Ganon, and that in all three split timeline branches, until Echoes of Wisdom in one of them, where the Golden Goddesses directly speak to Princess Zelda, as she is on the path to solve what they never did, only covered. Null, as this villain has only one aim, not to rule, but absolutely devour everything that we hold near and dear in the Zelda series making this princess, as she heads into the most treacherous territories, one of the most remarkable heroes in the entire franchise. She is by far the most incredible Zelda, and by taking down Echo Ganon on her own, just like Link did with the prior Echo Ganon, she becomes the chosen one for the goddesses. She is of royal and divine blood. 
Hylia's reincarnated mortal descendants, and the heir to Hyrule's throne. After Link was trapped, she is the last hope for the goddesses. Do bear in mind that by the time Zelda reaches the temple of Elden, Laneru and Faron, she has freed both the minister and general before storming occupied Hyrule Castle, reclaiming canonically four rifted away temple territories. Upon the final one, setting her father the king and her caretaker Impa free, all by crushing any opponents in Hyrule and the Stillwood. No wonder the goddesses reveal the truth to her. She's actually worthy of claiming the complete relic they left behind and if need be, defeat Null in direct combat. Luckily, she doesn't have to resort to a full one-on-one -on -one duel. You see, even the prophecy of a priestess and hero fighting hand in hand is told by the king before Zelda heads out to the sacred lands and temples of the goddesses in Echoes. It is this that somewhat keeps the king hopeful for his daughter. On a quest, as following Link's first swing against the actual Null, there is no way the princess will pull her rod alone. Link will stand by her side, just like Zelda has been aiding Link in prior final confrontations in the series. It's just that this time, Zelda has to free Link. At the same time, he is trapped later than expected, as throughout the first half of Echoes, that is to say up to the resolution of a battle against Echo Ganon, Link roams the rift independently. In fact, he is the reason why Zelda leaves without interruption and is only trapped as he turns his back to Null, who he just clubbed with wood. He wanted to interact with Zelda, or perhaps even the part of the throne room with her, escaping the horrible nightmare he had been subjected to in the world of nothingness. At the same time, it is a ceiling in the crystal that allows the priestess to continue her quest and be approached by the goddesses, since Zelda still had to enter the rifts and only try allowed for that. She is allied with the princess, not Link. In other words, only the princess could be approached by the goddesses. This was her quest all along. Link is only there to set it in motion, prevent her from falling at the midpoint and fight by her side in the conclusion. Since the Kingdom of Hyrule was hopeless against the rifts that was taking away, especially, young children. But it really all boils down to this. Zelda is destined to claim the Triforce, something that also Null deducts. Hence the ambush after Zelda has gained her third and final audience with the goddesses, creating Echo Zelda to take her place and stand before the Great Deku Tree in the Eternal Forest first. Null claims the Triforce, but luckily for Zelda, Echo Zelda is Null, and hence the relic as intended by the goddesses split leaving only the Triforce of Power with Echo Zelda while sending the Triforce of Wisdom to the real Zelda, or if you will, the Priestess of Wisdom, and the Triforce of Courage to the spirit of the hero, Link. As you can see, nothing has changed apart from the addition of the specific reason behind the Tree Goddess's descent to create the surface and sky. Null, the destroyer of all life. It is brilliant writing in the 21st Zelda title as it subtly but decisively alters what we knew behind the creation legend. It adds yet another layer to the lore before Skyward Sword and Goddess Hyrule. When Null is destroyed and the Triforce fully claimed by Link and Zelda, the world is saved, though only in the timeline branch that the quest and final battle took place. In the other two branches, Null remains, and that creates some very interesting implications for the future. As we remember, Last year, producer Eiji Anuma and 3D Zelda director Hidemara Fujibayashi hinted at the possibility that Hyrule of Tears of the Kingdom might have history that was destroyed and that Raru's kingdom might not have been the first kingdom of Hyrule. Well, here we have the original force of destruction in the Legend of Zelda, one that is still present in the other timeline branches. Null, who has demonstrated its ability to end it all. Who is to say that at some point that just happened? and the goddesses were forced to return back to the surface and repeat the task of recreating the world. Also, that later, Raru could found the kingdom of Hyrule with priestess turned queen Sony. But what do you think of the expansion or origin to the creation story presented for the first time in Echoes of Wisdom? Sound off in the comment section down below. If you haven't already, then be sure to leave a like, subscribe and press the notification bell and for all notifications to not miss any upcoming videos. Last but not least, a big thanks to you for watching and to all our patreon.com slash common realm patrons. 
Special shoutouts go to raw producers Zach Johnson and JC Fung and Heroes, Holly Wolf, Cheryl and Garrett Hoy. You rock and please enjoy one or both of these two awesome videos. <laughs>